hard work. <laughs> and that's why we like to do it over here with the LEDs instead, because we don't have to work so hard. It's all magnets. <laughs> you got the whole thing stuck there. Now I have a question. If you leave the bottom ones down, and then you flip it over, what happens? Put it on now. Whoa. It didn't stick. Do you know why it did that? Magnets are funny like that. Sometimes they stick together and sometimes they push each other apart. <laughs> do you want to try catching the paper clips? No. You want to do this one. This is the cool one. Oh, nice. Hi, I'm Darren Springer, General Manager with Burlington Electric Department. We're here at the first ever Net Zero Energy Festival uh, at 585 Pine Street at our offices. And we're here today to really focus the community's attention on climate change and the different efforts we can make to reduce fossil fuel use, whether that is driving electric, mowing electric, uh, using a cold climate heat pump, uh, riding an e-bike, uh, doing more walking and biking in general, and a number of other things that we can do to reduce energy use and save money. Uh, we're hoping this becomes an annual tradition uh, here in Burlington and that we can share with our customers uh, good advice, uh, have different installers and vendors share uh, what they're doing and what technologies are available, and uh, have a fun event. We have lots of uh, fossil fuel-free uh, food trucks here. Uh, we have live music and a DJ, and uh, a great uh, day for the weather uh, that we had here as well. So uh, we hope that folks will continue to visit BurlingtonElectric.com, check out our rebates, and uh, join us for the Net Zero Festival every year. Okay. Yeah, well, if, you, if you both aren't going on long trips separately regularly, right. then an all-electric makes it, you know, make, would make a lot of sense to Coming me anyway. Town and all yeah. that. Well, thank you. Yep. Thanks. So have, you, have you been down? There are a bunch of vehicles down there, and owners, if you're curious oh, to... Still down, oh, there's still yeah, more. Still more down there. Keep going. Thank you. Yeah. I am Lee Perry. I am the division director for DPW Maintenance. Um, we are attending the EV Net Zero uh, event. Uh, we brought our Chevy Bolt admin car and fires Mach-E Mustang. These are vehicles that replaced uh, gas-powered uh, vehicles in our fleet. When they reach their useful life, we try to replace them with either a electric option or a hybrid, but we prefer the electric option like the Chevy Bolt here. So the city will replace vehicles that have electric options. Eventually, we would like to have our recycling trucks be electric vehicles. Um, that technology is close, but I don't think it's where we need it right now uh, to replace those types of vehicles. Our large plow trucks don't have any electric options right now uh, for our sidewalk tractors. Um, sweepers, they do have electric models, so when it comes time to replace the sweepers, we will look at those options. Yeah. But yeah, you'll see our cars have the dots. Yeah, we have 22 vehicles in different locations throughout Burlington. Yeah, so you'll see, yeah, you'll see them kind of popping up here and there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, more and more are becoming electric. Which is cool. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm here today at the Net Zero Energy Festival to talk to folks about CarShare Vermont. And we are a local nonprofit based here in Burlington. We provide an alternative to car ownership and about half of our fleet are either fully electric or plug-in hybrids. So we're really excited about offering Burlington residents an opportunity to try out electric vehicle technology but not have to own a car. Um, we also serve um, low-income Vermonters that maybe are, aren't able to afford to buy a car but still need access to transportation. So our mobility share program provides a free membership to um, residents of Burlington. If you receive Three Squares Vermont, or live at Burlington Housing, Champlain Housing Trust, or Cathedral Square Housing, you automatically get a free membership to Crochet Vermont. And many of our locations are within walking, bi biking, or busing distance from where 
folks live. Um, we have over a thousand members here in Burlington and 22 cars that are being shared and we're continuing to add new locations um, every year. So we're excited to again make EVs really accessible and affordable for all Vermonters um, and all residents of Burlington. So I hope you, you can go to carsharevt.org to learn more or swing by our office at 131 St. Paul Street. We're right downtown and we'd love to hear from you. I'm Dave Roberts. I work with the Drive Electric Vermont program. We're a partnership working to get more EVs in the state of Vermont. We work on charging infrastructure development and uh, help support consumers making a purchase of an electric vehicle. So we have some great resources on our website, driveelectricvt.com, including a vehicle comparison tool that talks about the 40 plus models that are currently available in the state. We also have information on all the incentives. So there's federal, state, and electric utility incentive programs that can knock up to $14,000 or more off the purchase of a new or used electric car, both all electric and plug-in hybrid. And when you factor in all those incentives, that can bring the price of a new EV down to under $15,000 in some cases. The incentives are uh, structured by income levels, so folks with lower income can qualify for higher incentives. And there are incentives on used vehicles as well. There are a number of public charging places around the state, currently over 300. Uh, the state is working on building out additional fast charging for electric vehicles, but most EV drivers can charge at home overnight. That's the most convenient, least cost place to do it. And on average in Vermont, it's the equivalent of about a dollar or 50 gallon gasoline, which is great right now with gas prices where they're at. And in some places like Burlington, where we're at today, if you get on Burlington special off-peak EV rate, that'll bring the cost down to the equivalent of about 80 cents a gallon gasoline. So it can save tons of money. Have a great driving experience. EVs are great to drive, lots of fun, quiet, great performance. And I encourage folks to check them out at the local dealers or come out to an event like this, talk to owners, hear about their experience. They're uh, just great cars to drive. Let me ask you one question. So if a person wanted to convert their house to be able to charge a vehicle at home, is there is that an exorbitant cost? Or just so charging at home can be as simple as uh, this device, which comes with the vehicle, just plugs into a standard 120 volt home outlet. That'll give you about five miles of range per hour of charging. So if you're driving more than 40 miles a day or you have a longer range electric vehicle, you might want to step up to what's called a level two charger. So that's 240 volt, like an electric clothes dryer. And depending on your home and the situation with your electric panel, that could cost anywhere from maybe $300 to $1,000. Um, in some cases more if your electric service is really antiquated and needs to be upgraded. But for most folks, it's a pretty reasonable cost and a number of electric utilities have programs that can help support uh, customers getting that level two charging equipment installed. In some cases, even the automakers uh, will help support that. So for example, Chevrolet has a program right now where they'll help pay for the installation of that level two equipment. Climbing trees around the power lines. Bad idea. See? Flying kites. Earth. That's it. Don't do it. I think it's pretty cool. It's real electricity. See, I can touch it because I wear these rubber gloves. See how thick that is? You can feel it if you want. Nice and it's a thick rubber. That's why I can touch the power lines. But without that, you're going to get hurt, so you can't do it. That's why you don't put anything off your house too close to the line. Yeah. Just stay away from the power lines. That's all it's about. Hi there, we're just here uh, demonstrating some induction cooking, which is uh, not a super new technology, but it's come a long way, and it uh, is going a long way to reduce carbon footprint. So I guess Burlington Electric asked us from City Market to come down here and uh, demonstrate this technology and how you can get one of these rather inexpensive uh, countertop burners uh, to use uh, for your cooking at home instead of your expensive uh, 
electric stove that burns all kinds of power or your gas burning stove that's burning carbon fuel. So we're hoping to uh, make a big difference. We're demonstrating a black bean and corn quesadilla here. And we also have a second dish over here that uh, is called the shakshuka, which is a North African uh, simmered tomato, chickpea and egg dish with feta cheese. Hi, we're down here at uh, City Market at the Burlington uh, Net Zero Electric Fest. Um, we're always looking for new members, so if you want to learn a little bit about our membership benefits, you can come down to customer service at our downtown or uh, South End Flynn Ave store and learn a bit more about being a member. We love um, our over 12,000 members. So. so my name's Steve Wisbaum and I'm the founder of the Mo Electric campaign. And uh, basically, I am uh, an advocate for transitioning to electric lawn care uh, within the public and private sectors. And um, so I was instrumental in, in uh, convincing uh, the, all the electric utilities in the state to create incentives slash rebates for electric lawn care products, uh, mowers and all the yard tools. And, um, and I... Uh, just go to events like this and um, I have a website um, where is a it's a resource um, for people who are either trying to make the transition themselves or are um, trying to encourage their homeowners association or their town um, or their tennis club <laughs> or anywhere where uh, they're they're you know church or uh, college or school um, to make, you know, consider switching to electric lawn care. And uh, we've gotten some success. Uh, City of Burlington has begun the, the transition. They own probably three or four mowers, uh, commercial electric lawn mowers. Um, UVM has begin the switch. They own now three commercial electric mowers. Um, Shelburne Farms um, recently purchased two. So it's definitely happening. There's still a long way to go. I think the state, um, within the state agencies and departments, there's only one, they only own one electric mower so far. So still a lot of work to do, but um, it's uh, becoming normalized now. People recognize that not only do they work, but they work really well and they're a lot less expensive to own and operate because there's little to no maintenance. Um, they're just relatively simple machines, but uh, powerful and um, able to uh, do the job. And um, so, yeah, things in the industry has also grown. There's so many companies now, as you could see, um, that are offering um, manufacturing electric lawn care some some companies are are some of the legacy manufacturers like Toro and Gravely um, they're coming out with electric mowers and then there's some companies that just make electric mowers like Mean Green and Greenworks and Ego um, so yeah that's where the industry is moving and uh, it's been uh, it's been fun to be part of that change here in Vermont we have to have someone out to shoot. Yeah, so that, that happens all the time, and your electrician knows how to coordinate oh, with our okay. guys. Okay. We just want to make sure everyone's safe. Okay. The, once, if the meter gets pulled for any reason, it comes back and we see it. And yeah. So we, we see it as an outage. So we just want to make sure everything's okay. Okay. So, yeah, they'll, they'll coordinate oh, with our service guys. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have to have Burlington Electric come out and our electrician. I don't think, I think the electrician okay. can handle all that. There's just some notification. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good luck Thank with you. It. Thank Take you. care. Yeah, hi, I'm Kevin with SunCommon, and uh, I've been with SunCommon for about 10 years, and what I do is I help people go solar. So if you're interested in solar, I'd be happy to help you out, but I work with both homeowners and business owners, and you know, meet with them to see if it makes sense to go solar, what are the economics, what are the ways to do it, where would it go, what size system, all that good stuff. And it can make a lot of sense you know, if you've got the right kind of spot for it, either a nice ground area or a roof that is appropriate for solar. Um, a lot of folks that I talk to, they want to go solar for environmental reasons, but also to save money. And you, know, you will save money over time. There's some great incentives available as well. And today I'm here at the EV event, which uh, we're co-sponsoring with BED, Burlington Electric Department, and Drive Electric Vermont. So there's a lot of EVs here, electric vehicles. That's another great thing with today's technology is getting away from fossil fuels, getting away from gas and oil, and 
and, and converting to clean electricity, which is part of our mission. And uh, Sun Commons is a certified B Corp. We've been around since 2013, or 2011 actually, and we're the largest installer in the state. So we've helped about 8,000 homeowners go solar and keep growing more every day. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Hey, we're here at the Burlington Net Zero event. Uh, I'm Jacob, this is Damon. We're a couple of volunteers in the community. We know there is a lot of old leaky windows in Burlington, and we are putting on a community build to make these things, window inserts that you can put in your windows, sop those drafts, put a little more insulation in your windows, and we know replacing windows is super expensive, so this is an affordable alternative. People who participate, they come. we got a couple of build days. We're going to be at the Echo Center. And everybody who comes to get these window inserts, they come in, they help build them, and go home with some window inserts for their windows. Um, anybody interested, uh, check out. We have a nonprofit window dressers that comes and helps us organize all this and gets the materials together and makes the jigs. Go to their website. Right on their web page is a sign up button. We're, uh, we're going to be measuring windows a couple more weeks. And then in November, we're going to be doing the build. So I uh, hope to see you guys, spread the word, uh, and stay warm out there. See ya. Hi, my name is Peggy O'Neill Vivanco. We're here at uh, Burlington Electric's Net Zero Energy Fair, and I'm representing Walk to Shop. Um, I'm actually affiliated with UVM's Transportation Research Center and Vermont Clean Cities. And um, this coalition of Walk to Shop encourages walking for purpose and um, we have funding from Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission where we were able to purchase um, a container with these shopping trolleys and in these shopping trolleys we have two sizes the medium and the large that carry between 40 and 50 pounds of groceries or laundry or items to carry to the beach and um, they're able to go on buses, walk on our sidewalks, and really allow greater access to food and services for folks who use them. We also have this map over here. And on the map, you'll see the centerpiece is a, a grocery store. And the circle around it represents 1,500 steps. And that's about 3 quarters of a mile, maybe a 15-minute walk. And with a trolley, instead of carrying your heavy groceries, you put them in the trolley and it makes that 15 minute walk much more manageable. Carrying 20 pounds in um, a shopping trolley is a lot easier on your back and easy to maneuver up and down the sidewalks. So we have these, um, we have these for sale and we are really supporting um, net zero energy here in Burlington and greater Chittenden County. Hi, Stu Lindsay with Locomotion and Valley Bike Parking. We're at the uh, BED uh, Net Energy Zero um, conference to park bikes from the uh, attendees that come in. It's a great conference, reminds me very much of the energy fairs of the uh, 1970s and 80s. And interesting to just see how much activity there is within the um, alternative energy and electrical um, facilities. Hi, my name is Mark Stevenson. I work with Vermont Energy. We're out of Williston, Vermont. And we sell heat pumps, high efficiency gas systems, and ventilation systems for homes and businesses throughout Vermont. We're here today to support Burlington Electric and to support the goals of the net zero energy um, that both Burlington and the state of Vermont are looking at. We sell cold climate heat pumps and essentially energy efficiency, which helps us reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. The heat pump industry is the next technology in heating. At some point, we're gonna stop burning fossil fuels. Whether you agree with it or not, it's just happening. Um, in the next 15 to 20 years, um, we won't have uh, gas furnaces or oil furnaces. We'll be operating with heat pump technology. We're the company that got in on the ground floor 20 years ago and innovated heat pump technology in Vermont. 
Hi, I'm JP, and I'm with North Star Sports. Um, we're right on Burlington, in Burlington, Vermont, at 100 Main Street. Um, I'm here at the Burlington Electric uh, Electric Festival, um, and we're here showing off our electric assist uh, bikes. Um, we do a bunch of bikes from companies in Europe, such as like Cube, um, which is a bike uh, brand from Germany, built in Germany. They use a Bosch system, so a really reputable, well-known brand for electric. Um, and here's another company. This is Gazelle. They're a Dutch company. This is made in the Netherlands. Um, again, they use Bosch as well. Um, we're here to promote people getting on bikes um, and uh, actually riding longer um, and enjoying the rides, flattening out those hills that they don't, they can't conquer, um, and just having more of an enjoyment of riding again brought back to them. Um, and there's tons of different styles. There's uh, hybrids. There's mountain electric bikes. There's road bike electric bikes. There's uh, step through bikes, there's bikes that are step over, there's so many different styles now um, and that's really where the industry is going. Uh, there's bigger batteries for longer ranges, smaller batteries for shorter ranges which makes them lighter, um, but we've got tons of them in stock. Um, we've uh, seen phenomenal growth in that category and that's where um, also companies are seeing phenomenal growth. Um, so yeah, best thing to do is stop in the shop. Um, we will get you on a test ride, um, see how you like it, and kind of go from there and hopefully uh, get you on a new bike. And there's one. Now, is the next one going to stick or not? That one's stuck. You got him lined up right. Do -do -do. Stuck too. This kid's got her polarities figured out. Oh, oh that oh, bounty! That, yeah. that, that was so cool. funny. What can we do? If you want it to stick, what do you have to do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of like when they float though. I'm like, Ooh. I like it too. Yeah. And also, here's the thing, right? Because when they float, if you can get them to float in your wire, you can make electricity. Ooh. That's what this machine is. Measuring awesome. for us here. But my arm is going to get really tired if this is how I'm making my electricity, right? What should she do? So we make it a little easier by spinning things. That's what's happening in here. This is a magnet, and so is this round part. I got a wire. Hey, champ. And I got a wire. Hey, champ. And I can spin my magnet whoa, whoa, whoa. past the wire with much less effort.